The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 819. Trust is a Commodity. We sell bread, a griffin with a scratchy voice drawled, standing behind a counter that was painstakingly made out of low-grade materials. But after you see what the others are selling, let me tell you, you're going to regret not buying me out right now. You want quality? You gotta shop smart. You see what I'm saying? He held out a long, thin loaf. The price is just a quality guarantee. Gerardo and Slipstream looked at each other, and then at the sign advertising one loaf for ten coins. Sunset had fallen, and in the growing shadows, a modest number of griffins were slinking about for a plaza full of shops, perfecting the art form of haggling. Rock dominated the landscape of Griffinstone proper, befitting its name, and all the buildings were made from wood that looked like it had been cheaply recycled from some other project, possibly more than once. Ahem, Gunford beckoned with a feather for a coin, but not from them. The merchant gave him a stink eye. What do I look like, a charity? Shove off, kid. I'm trying to cut a deal. Gunfer shrugged and leaned back toward Gerardo, whispering loudly enough for the shopkeeper to hear. If you're looking for more than a quick snack, bread will grow stale too quickly. Why don't we move along and look for raw ingredients instead? Hmm, perhaps an equitable idea. Gerardo lowered his head crest and started to walk away, pretending absolutely nothing had happened. Hey! The shopkeeper shook an angry, bald up talon. You have a beef with my business, you punk kid? What do you think you're doing? Gunfer spun around sharply. Well, perhaps they'd be willing to stay if you cut them a better deal. He held out a wing laden with five golden bits. Fifty percent off. Take it or lose them forever. His swishing tail tapped Gerardo's saddlebags, causing them to jingle with unspent gold. Ah, I don't do business with... The shopkeeper banked his fist on the table, depositing a single loaf. Fine! See? That wasn't so bad. Gunford deposited his coins and swiped the bread, turning his back again on the merchant. He offered it to Gerardo. Six bits. I profit a little for my effort, you still save forty percent, and you can't eat dry ingredients for a snack. Sounds like a win to everyone? Slipstream's ears fell. That's still far more expensive than where we got these. Gerardo weighed his saddlebags and frowned, a not insignificant portion of their wealth already siphoned off by their guide. I'm afraid we're going to have to economize harder on our own pickings if we want to bring back a suitably large supply of food. Gunfer's head crest fell slightly as he stared at them and fought, until suddenly a noise from the bread seller caught his attention. No! I am done cutting deals for the day, the merchant was angrily telling a thin griffiness with heavy eyeliner. Full price! I have a reputation to uphold! The Griffiness slowly blinked, holding up eight bits in a single talon like a hand of cards. She slid a ninth in with her thumb. Ten percent off. The baker frowned. That a dissatisfied customer I hear? Gunford turned around, flipping and catching his loaf. You know, I have exactly the same thing he's selling, and am more than willing to be reasonable. Seven bits. That's less than I offered in the first place, the Griffiness said, looking bored as she relieved him of the loaf and turned over seven coins. You have yourself a deal. The shopkeeper fumed, but the Griffiness barely gave him a second look as she walked away. Next time, you should run a better business model. Gunfer chuckled as he headed off in a separate direction, beckoning Gerardo and Slipstream to follow. Heh, you don't even need to buy anything for me to make money off you. Maybe I should pay you to stick around a while longer. Too many griffins get light-headed when they smell a rich customer. Not going to lie, that was kind of brutal. A slipstream full their ears. You don't seem to have a very high standard of treatment for your fellow griffins, Jordan remarked. Correction. I don't have a high standard of treatment for anyone who will lose me money. 
Gunfer strolled into an alley, lovingly stroking his pockets. There are the griffins who play the game, and then the ones who see others playing and want to join in, even though they belong at home. He wasn't going to benefit from your money, so try not to feel too bad for him. Slipstream frowned. From the condition his storefront was in, he might have needed it to survive. Those prices were exorbitant, but still. Hey, I gave him a sale. Gunfer shrugged with his wings, a note of exasperation creeping into his voice. If anyone cared about actually spending their money on a higher quality of life, or even put as much effort into the rest of their lives as they did into getting rich, the place wouldn't be such a dump. But it's been every griffin for themselves in this world for years and years, and no one thinks about a thing other than having more money than everyone else. Gerardo gave him a look. And that includes you, I take it. Why wouldn't it? Gunfer flipped upside down, resuming his tail hanging from an exposed jutting rafter. It's a game I'm good at, and there's no point in winning at something nobody plays. So what do you mean, for years and years, Slipstream sighed? Was it not always like this? Gunfer extended a feather. You are deviously good at this, indeed. Gerardo shook his head, paying up. Gunfer pocketed it with satisfaction. Everyone says it was different. I find it hard to believe. Twenty, thirty years ago, there was a king up in the castle at the top of the mountain, and some things happened that everyone will give you a different story on. Some say monsters invaded, others say there was a war. I think the king got what he could while the getting was good, took his retainers and ran. Now the castle's got nothing but squatters who are too cheap to build their own houses. Though I shouldn't be talking. Gerardo raised an eyebrow. This king wouldn't happen to be called the Forest King, would he? Gunfer looked at him with interest. Where do you hear a name like that? Slipstream started to open her mouth until Gerardo silenced her with a wing, a little smile playing on his beak. Actually, I think that's the kind of information that might be valuable enough for us to sell back. Oh, really? Gunfer appraised him critically and thoroughly. Eh, I'll pass. Probably not much you could tell me about the Forest King anyway. Giorgio frowned. If this is something important, we would appreciate a primer. Gunfer held out a feather. Gerardo flipped him a coin with an exasperated sigh. How are you so good at this? Like I told you before, information is a commodity. Gunfer pocketed it with nonchalance. Anytime you're looking for something that can be sold, you're asking to be swindled. All I want is money, so I don't have my greed competing with a thirst for products to undermine it. He swung lightly on the rafter. The forest king is the old king, or maybe the prince or the princess prince. They say he and his retainers ran off to live in the forest to the northeast after whatever happened. Whether it's true or not, nobody here cares enough to investigate, and it's likely the same for them. Hmm. Slipstream rubbed her chin. So, I'm guessing the next thing on your list is lodging, right? Gunfer glanced at the sky where stars were just beginning to become visible. Then keep trying to get food tomorrow. How many mouths are you trying to feed? Slipstream nodded. I think we need it, yeah. And how did you know we needed it for others? I didn't. But thank you for telling me. Gunfer swung again. You know, we've been friendly enough so far that I'd be willing to make you a deal. Gerardo watched him. Explain. Your money, Gunfer pointed at the saddlebags. Give me all of it, and by dawn, I'll have you a far better food deal than you're going to get on your own. Slipstream hesitated. All of it? Sure, Gunfer shrugged. Only a fool would risk going broke on a guy like me, so I'm willing to wager that if you accept, it means you have more back where your friends are. And I'm also willing to bet on my own talent I can come back with enough that you'll need some extra shoulders to carry it all home. I'm smelling potential for involvement in something long-term lucrative, if you know what I mean. 
And we have your word that you won't rob us or rip us off. And Gerardo raised an eyebrow. I'm aware you just told us stealing was pointless, but this is hardly an insignificant amount of money. Gun for I the saddlebags. I said what I said, and I'm betting that's not all you have. Only a fool wouldn't leave some somewhere safe if they were worried about brigands. We're talking at least six saddlebags stuffed with good quality food here. And you'll need the money up front, Slipstream sighed. It's a rare griffin who takes credit. Gerardo hesitated slightly longer and stuck out a talon, shrugging off his bags. We need the aid, and you've read us correctly. I hope I'm reading you right in return. Thanks. Gunfer flipped upright, taking the saddlebags for himself. This is going to be worth your while. End of chapter 819